for feedback to be effective, it should be three things. It should be targeted, it should be specific, and it should be timely. Targeted means you are focusing on a specific subject, specific assignment. You don't want to be random and tell the kids, well, I may be giving you feedback on this particular activity because then that can set up nervousness. They won't know what to expect. You will be bombarded with questions and it just won't end well. So again, targeting, choosing specifically what you are going to focus on, informing your students is key and making sure they're comfortable and equipped to handle what's going to be coming at them is a good first step. Again, going back to the old school comments of, good job, Fred, it uh, doesn't really help them or propel them forward to better learning or better um, critical literacy or digital literacy skills, for example. So you want to be specific in picking a couple of success criteria and letting them know how well they did. So tidy printing or you colored that well, yeah, that's just commenting on their ability to complete tasks. But being specific and saying, you know, you answered this question, however, I need more details, you didn't include enough adjectives, I'm looking for longer sentence structures, that kind of thing is more appropriate. For primary students, you want to make sure you are super specific. And again, not going on and on and on, because again, you'll get the blank faces and they will just tune out. And this is important because I know as busy teachers, we have a million and one things to do over the course of a morning, afternoon, or week. And it's easy for things to you know, slide and we don't get things back on time. If you are taking, however, such an important um, measure in telling the kids, I'm giving you feedback on this particular activity, that will be in their heads. They will be excited about that. They will want the feedback sooner rather than later. So again, if you're choosing to do a one-on-one -on -one conference, set aside a block of time whereby the kids can have a work period and you invite a few kids up at a time to quietly discuss their results and approach uh, next steps. If you let it go for a week or two, it's just the kids won't care, they'll forget, and again, it will not be helping them to build on their learning path, and uh, it won't resonate with them. And all that time and effort you spend setting up the goals, the criteria, discussing the whole feedback process, it's all for naught. always have the kid leave with a good exit plan. So if you've given them feedback in a conference or on a piece of paper, chat with them a little later on, just remind them, ask them, you know, what's one point that we discussed or one point that you remember on the paper that I, you know, noted for you. If they can come up with that, then you are on a winning path. They'll remember, they will implement that next time in their spelling activity, in their math or in their science. If they say, uh, I don't know, then clearly you need to spend more time. Perhaps that kid is more of an auditory learner or visual. You need to sit them down, show them something. As long as it sticks with them, then feedback will be super meaningful and it's a win-win all around. Thanks.